Hey everybody, Sebastian here with Cosmic Candy. Today, I wanted to take a look at Deep Composer. Developed by Amazon, Deep Composer is an AWS service intended to give developers, regardless of their background, a creative way to experience machine learning. With Deep Composer, you get to compose music using various machine learning techniques. Let's dive in. The Deep Composer console contains six sections getting started, music studio, models, compositions, chart busters, and learning capsules. When you launch Deep Composer, you'll be brought to the getting started section by default. Here, we can do things like learn about the basics of generative AI and GANs, which stands for generative adversarial networks. We can launch the music studio. We can train a model. We can view the latest chart busters challenge and learn how to train a model in Amazon SageMaker. Now, if machine learning and generative artificial intelligence are concepts that are new to you, I would recommend going through the basics of generative AI and GANs. Here, you will get a basic understanding of machine learning and generative AI, which is a kind of AI program that Deep Composer is. Generative AI programs use things like audio files, text, or images to generate similar content. Now let's take a look at the heart of the console, which is the Music Studio. Here we create, generate, and edit our Deep Composer compositions. There are three types of generative AI techniques that Deep Composer supports. Generative adversarial networks, autoregressive convolutional neural networks, and transformers. The generative adversarial technique takes the input melody and creates four accompaniment tracks. The autoregressive technique changes your input melody by adding or replacing notes. And finally, the transformers technique will extend the input melody. Let's try out each technique, starting with generative adversarial networks or a GAN technique. To begin, we need an input melody and a pre-trained model. For the input melody, we can record it by pressing the record button and using the keys on the keyboard to play our notes. Alternatively, we can choose from a list of pre-made melodies. Note that some of these melodies are recommended for Transformers technique, while others are recommended for all techniques. We can also import a MIDI file if we would like. For this demonstration, I'll choose a pre-made melody, and I will pick Deck the Halls. Now we have to choose a pre-trained model to use which is what will generate the notes for our four accompaniment tracks. With a GAN-based technique, we can either select a model that uses the MuseGain architecture or a UNet. Since we aren't provided with any UNet-based models by default, I'm going to stick with MuseGain. Next, we have to select which model we want. Deep Composer comes with five pre-trained MuseGain models. We can also train and use our own models, which I'll touch on later in this video. I'm going to go ahead and choose Rock. So now that we have our input melody and model parameters all set, I'm going to click Generate Composition, and in just a few seconds, Deep Composer will create four accompaniment tracks that ideally should complement the input melody. Let's take a listen. Not too bad. The quality of the output our model generates, which in this case is the four tracks, will vary based on things like what our input melody is like and the model we choose to generate the notes. Now, let's take a look at the second generative AI technique called autoregressive convolutional neural network. This technique creates a melody by adding or replacing notes from the input melody. So for the input melody, I will again choose Deck the Halls. Now let's set up our model parameters. Unlike the previous technique, where we could choose between the two architectures, MuseGain and UNet, we have to stick with a convolutional 
neural network architecture. As for the model, Deep Composer provides one called Autoregressive CNN Bach, which was trained on a dataset containing chorales by Johann Sebastian Bach. Again, we can train and use our own model if we want to, but since I haven't created my own model yet, I will use the one provided here. Now, unlike the previous technique, we have some additional settings we can tweak. These additional settings are formally known as hyperparameters, which control the learning process of the model. Amazon's Deep Composer Developer Guide provides more info on what each hyperparameter does. For this demonstration, I'll set maximum input notes to remove to 60%, maximum notes to add to 60. For sampling iterations, I will keep it at 100. And for creative risk, I will set it to 0.8. So with our input melody and model parameters set, I'll click Enhance Input Melody, and in a few seconds, we will get our new composition. Let's see what Deep Composer came up with. Like the previous technique, the quality of the output will vary based on what the input melody is and the algorithm that is being used to generate the inferences. Additionally, the values we provide for the model's hyperparameters will influence the output that's generated. Now let's move to the third and final generative AI technique, transformers. The transformers technique creates a new melody, which is an extension of the input melody. So for this technique, I'll stick with the Deck the Hall sample track. Now let's set our model parameters. Similar to the previous algorithm, we only have one option for the architecture, which in this case is Transformer XL. As for the specific pre-trained model we will use, Deep Composer only comes with one called Transformer XL Classical. Since I haven't trained any of my own models yet, I will stick with that. Now let's set up our hyperparameters, which influence the learning process of the model. I won't get into the details about each hyperparameter in this video, so if you would like to know more about what they do and how, be sure to check out the Deep Composer developer guide. For now, I'm just going to arbitrarily enter values for each hyperparameter. So with our input melody and model parameters all set, I'll click on Extend Input Melody, and in just a moment, we will get our new melody, which will be an extension of the melody we put in. Okay, it's all done. So let's hear what Deep Composer did. Now let's look at the model section of Deep Composer. At the bottom here, we can see the sample models that come with Deep Composer, which we saw earlier when we were setting up our model parameters. If we click on any of the genre-based MuseGain models, we can see more information about the model's performance. We can click on View Learning Capsule to better understand the loss function graph which is a method for evaluating how well the algorithm models the dataset. There's also a section called Generated Samples, where we can view graphs of output samples versus ground truth samples for various metrics such as pitches used and polyphonic rate. 
So in addition to the sample models at the bottom, any models that we create will show in the top section. And if you would like to create a model, click the Create a Model button. Currently, AWS Deep Composer Console only supports training a GAN-based model that uses either the MuseGAN or UNet architecture. Recall that a GAN-based algorithm generates accompaniment tracks to an input melody. If you're interested in training autoregressive or transformers-based models, you can learn how to in the Learning Capsule section, which I will get to in a bit. Let's move to the next section, which is Compositions. Here we can search and view compositions that have been generated. To listen to a composition, select one, and then click the play button. You can also load the composition into the Music Studio by clicking on the Load into Music Studio button. If we click on the Actions button, we can do things like share our composition on SoundCloud, download it as MIDI or MP3, and edit or delete our composition. Now let's take a look at the Chart Busters section. Chart Busters is a monthly challenge where people create and upload decomposer compositions on SoundCloud to win prizes. Currently, there's a challenge called Keep Calm and Model On, where you have to use a sample input melody with a Transformers technique. You can read the bullet points to learn more about how to compete and what the judging criteria will be, as well as the prizes that will be awarded. It looks like the winner of this month's challenge will receive a one hour mentorship session with an AWS machine learning expert and will be interviewed and featured in an AWS machine learning blog post. The winner will also receive an AWS Deep Composer Chart Busters gold record mailed to their physical address. If we scroll down more, we can see the top 10 compositions from the previous competitions. So if you are interested in submitting a composition for the Chart Busters Challenge, you can click on the orange Submit a Composition button to select the track you wish to submit. And then sign into SoundCloud or create an account to share the track. The last section is the Learning Capsule section. The Learning Capsules are meant to be small and easy to consume modules that teach you more about generative AI techniques and machine learning concepts. Right now, it looks like there are five Learning Capsules. There's Introduction to Generative Adversarial Networks, Introduction to Autoregressive Convolutional Neural Networks, A Deep Dive into Training an ARCNN Model, a history of sequential modeling, and learn more about the transformer technique. If I click on Introduction to Generative Adversarial Networks, we can see that the learning capsule is divided into sections. The sections aren't loaded with tons of information since they are meant to be bite-sized. Towards the end, there is also a short quiz to test your knowledge about what you learned. So that is the learning capsule section. In addition to the sections I talked about, there's a new version of the Music Studio you can try out. You can also link your AWS Deep Composer keyboard if you purchase one. And there's also a Deep Composer forum. So that is a brief overview of what Deep Composer is and how it works. I think it's interesting to see how AI and machine learning can be used for compositional purposes and I look forward to seeing how this area develops. With that, I hope you found this video useful, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.